You guys know that view, right? This sign, this building that has no any sort of marketing. Lots of guys, boy, Ethan, hope you're having a great day. This is gonna be um, uh, a fun a fun week, couple set of videos coming up back in LA here at Hustler. I've got a big week coming up. I haven't played many cash games, as you can see from the videos. I've been, I went to Florida, played some tournaments, and here, this is the warm-up game. The warm-up stream before the million dollar game, playing uh, 5100 with some of the regulars that you see. Um, and it's probably gonna get up really big. 5100, 200, 400, I wouldn't be surprised if we see 800 straddles here and there. And uh, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be, um, I guess, uh, reasonable stakes before some ridiculous stakes. So using this warm-up game, I'm pretty excited. Looking forward to today. Uh, first time playing cash games in a while, so it's always a little nerve-wracking, but let's get into it. There's someone who needs help with an ambulance going by. Let's get in there. The game is 25, 50, 100. We have an all-star lineup of all the Hustler regulars and we're all warming up for the million dollar game. And let's get right into the action here early on. About an hour into the stream, I pick up King Jack of Hearts. We get Mariano to raise things up to $300. I'm next to act and I decide to just make the call here. It could certainly go with a raise, but I uh, thought call was best. Two other players make the call behind and we're going to a flop of Queen 10, Deuce, two freaking hearts. Well, this is quite the flop to see, obviously, with the open ender, flush draw, got the world, action checks it over to me, and I'm going to go for a big bet here, even though we're multi-way. I decided to bet $1,000 as we have tons of equity and definitely a hand that wants to blow to the pot. And to my surprise with this big bet, I get two opponents to make the call, so we're going to a turn which comes another queen. Interestingly enough now, Nick, first to act, decides to throw out a blocker bet of $500. And when Mariano makes the call here, I am certainly not going to just call. We're going to start off with fireworks. It's a little bit dicey as when I raise, I'm basically only repping a queen. And it's scary to rep trips here without actually having trips myself. But uh, yeah, if there's ever a hand to bluff and raise here and pretend like I have a queen, well, I think King Jack Hearts in this situation is going to be the best candidate. So a uh, raising's up pretty large to 5,500. And quickly, both of my opponents fold around. And we're going to scoop this pot up early on. It's always nice to win a pot like this. Granted, I had a really big draw, but always good for the confidence booster. Moving on to the next hand, picking up Ace, Queen of Clubs. We get Wesley to raise things up to 300, and this is clearly a premium. Definitely one I want to three bet and get more money in, so I three bet to 1200. Wesley makes the call. Off to a flop of Queen, Eight, Five, Rainbow. Wesley checks it over, and I'm certainly going to throw it a bet. Obviously, very good flop with top pair, top kicker. I bet $1,000 for value, and my opponent makes the call. Going to a turn, which is the King of Hearts. Brings it back to our flush draw, and I now decide to throw it a bet of 4,000. I was kind of iffy whether I wanted to bet this turn card. You know, obviously it's a little bit scary as it's a card over my pair, but I thought I had a good enough hands to get more value, and Wesley decides to say no more and ends up letting his hands go. So here we are, two for two today on the session before we get it involved in a big spot here. Pocket deuces under the gun, I decide to limp. Something that I was working on, some sort of strategy that I thought could be effective here. So I'm experimenting with a limp. Nick limps in, makes the call, and now Wesley, he couldn't help himself, puts in a raise to 2,000. Action folds to me here, and look, Wesley's been very aggressive, certainly not afraid to get after, especially in a game this small for him here. So I'm going to make the call and set my, we're playing infinite dollars behind, and I'm also playing in position of him. Nick ends up folding out of the way, so we're going to heads up to a flop of ace, jack, six, all spades. Surprisingly, Wesley slows down and checks here out of position on this flop, and sitting with the deuce of spades, I think I can go either way with a check or bet. Uh, bet probably makes more sense in my mind because I love just piling chips into the middle. Definitely not the best candidate, but uh, I have basically the worst hand I'll ever have here. And I have a spade of a flush draw. So how bad could it be? I bet $1,000, very small sizing into the middle. And Wesley ends up coming along and we see the bink turn 
Deuce of Clubs here. Thank you, dealer. Wesley checks it over to me, and it's time to build a pot. We have so many dollars behind, and I want to get as much money in the middle as possible, so I'm going to go out with an overbet of 8,000. Here, I think I just have the best hand all the time for sure. Any sets, any flush was going to check raise my very small bet on the flop now, so confident I'm ahead, hoping to get called by the naked king of spades or maybe a pair of aces. Who knows? But when Wesley isn't making the call, we've got a pretty big pot ballooning here. Let's strap in. We're off to a river, which is the king of hearts. Beautiful. It is not a spade. I think I have the best hand by far here. And when Wesley checks one more time, you know I'm not giving up this one with three of a kind here. Very strong hand. And that's going to allow me to throw a very large bet of 30 thousand dollars snippety snap wesley makes the call all of a sudden we scoop a massive one over eighty thousand dollar pot coming my way it's pretty sick cooler he ends up rivering top two pair and that's how you win big pots in poker fat coolers running good and uh fading bad cards that i couldn't get action on you know if the river ends up being a spade then no more money gets put into the middle i still get to win but still a nice to bink a disguise set and win this one. Following hand, just as interesting and action-packed. I pick up queens here in the blinds. There's an undergun raise to 300, and I'm certainly going to raise this one up. So when action folds to me, I make it 1,500. Next to act, Henry, someone who loves to battle, someone who certainly plays very well. He ends up four betting me to 4,800. The Unlean player ends up folding, getting out of the way, and now onto me with Queens facing a cold four bet. Now I'm out of position against this opponent. It seems super, super strong, but I'm not gonna go anywhere, of course. With Queens, I make the call, and we've got a pretty big pot ballooning up here to a flop, which comes ace, deuce, deuce. Ah. Look, there aren't many cards I want to see on the board here, and an ace is one of them for sure. Not feeling super comfortable. I check it over to my opponent, and surprisingly, Henry checks this one back, which kind of threw me for a loop. And now when we're going to a turn, which is the three of spades, brings in a backdoor flush draw, I decide to uh, think things over. The wheels are turning in my brain. I'm trying to figure out whether it's best to bet or check, and I think I can just get some value with a small bet here. So I make it 2,000. Make it 2,000 to go, and Henry takes his time before grabbing more chips. What? He's going to check, check the flop here on an ace high board. Now going to rep that he has something on the turn. He bumps it up and raises to 7,000, I believe. I snap fold, uh, even though I think here, if we just pause the video, uh, certainly could have taken some more time to think about it because he has the 10, seven of diamonds, something that is pretty savagery by Henry. Props him for winning this one. Uh, maybe I should have thought about it for a little bit longer, but you know, it's much easier to say after the fact now that I've seen the cards. Hand following that action, the action's just getting started. I have ace jack of hearts in the blinds once again. In the blinds here, out of position, Wesley raises to 300. I am not standing for that $300 bet. I make it 1500, raising pretty big here. Three betting out of position, and Wesley four bets to 5500 now, and we've got a situation to be in. I think standardly, I can let this one go, but it's against Wesley, someone who's shown to have four bets with five seven off suits. He can certainly get in there with. Just really any two cards at this point, which makes it somewhat difficult to play, but ace jack of hearts against any two cards seems pretty good for me. I'm going to make the call. Going to a flop of deuce, three, four, two diamonds, and a heart. Very intriguing as I have backdoor flush draws. I have a obvious gutter to a straight and some two over cards. I check it to Wesley, and he throws out a pretty chunky bet of $8,000 pretty large i'd say in my opinion here to be quite honest with you not feeling extremely comfortable already with my specific hand i mean you know i'm really just praying to see a heart on the turn and somehow make a straight on the river but i just had to make the call for the 8000 and we're off to a turn which is the five of diamonds action card action killer well, I do have a straight. I check it over to Wesley, and now he decides to throw it a larger-sized bet to 20000 
<sighs> well, I'm not calling on the flop fold on the turn. Once again, this is Wesley. Very capable of having bluffs. Very capable of having some random six here, to be honest. So uh, who knows what he could have here, but my hand's too strong. I decide to call. River now comes the three of clubs. The board is paired, which shouldn't make a big difference. And with the pot at $67,000, I check and Wesley jams. That's right. He obviously covers the table, buying in deep, and he shoves it all in for my effective stack of 121,000, give or take. Look, uh, this is not a fun spot to be in, to be honest with you. Uh, I take my very sweet ass time. I try to be courteous of the other players at the table, but here, I mean, I'm facing a $120,000 river jam. Give me some time, guys. I, I go into the tank. I think things over, trying to figure out, like, is this guy even bluffing? Do I have better hands to call with? Uh, I certainly could have flushes. I could have a six with a diamond. It's just a lot of different hands that I certainly could call. So do I have to call with the lower end of a straight? Don't have any diamonds in my hand, so he certainly could be free rolling me with the wheel straight, but now it turned into the nut flush. It's a pretty miserable spot to be in, and I basically just toss a coin in my head, and it's a flip decision, and I end up just letting it go. I literally don't have an analysis besides thinking I have better hands to call with, and also it's a very, very big bet, 2x pot, and uh, we'll see. If Wesley were to bluff me to X-Pot, then kudos to him. He deserves all the money, but I let it go. And luckily, you know, you can see on the graphics that I made the right fold. He just did have the nuts, everything all over the place. And uh, it feels good to fold this one. Maybe uh, a couple months or a year ago, I certainly was just going to snap call a straight any day. About 10 minutes later after the big hand with Wesley, I get to battle him once again. I'm in the $200 straddle here and action folds to Wesley, who raises it up to $1,000 in the small blind. Folds back to me, picking up ace-deuce off suit. Uh, Wesley, once again, plays a wide range. I have an ace. Let's go to town with it. I make the call and we see a flop of ace-7-4 rainbow. Wesley starts off with a pretty standard bet of $700. Pretty small. Not going to go anywhere with top pair, of course. I have a really bad kicker. Some would call it the worst kicker. I make the call anyways, and we're off to a turn, which is the king of clubs. Brings in a backdoor flush draw, and now this time Wesley fires out $4,000. I'd expect him to bet big a lot of the time here with uh, really anything that he wants. Uh, of course, when it's a single raise pot, I didn't three bet pre-flop. I definitely don't have aces, I don't have kings, I don't have ace-king. All those hands kind of go out the door. So it makes sense why he wants to apply a lot of pressure to me here, but unfortunately for him, he just bluffed me in a massive pot. I'm not folding top pair for $4,000. Let's see a river. River comes a king. Okay, that's not so bad of a card, I don't think. Shouldn't make sense for Wesley to have many kings given the large sizing he bet on the turn. Shouldn't have just random trips. Would mainly just be a full house. And he's trying to rep one here when he throws out $20,000. I'm not doing anything, guys. Look, I'm not going to Hollywood. I'm not going to pretend like I'm going to think. It's a snap call from me. Uh, he, this opponent just put me all in for 2x pot. I'm never going to full top pair against this guy, especially after what happened. And he says I'm good. So it's nice to win back some of the money I lost in the previous hand versus him, just trading some money back and forth. But I'll scoop this one with just top pair, making a good call versus Jack High. This hand right here, the next one we're going to go over, is probably one of the more interesting ones of the entire game. I pick up Ace 10 off suit here and raise things up to 300. I get Mars to call and Mariano, so we're going three ways to a flop of Jack Jack 9, two diamonds, and a heart. Mariano checks it over to me here, and something I really love doing is just checking when it's multi-way. Just going to chill, and that allows Mars to throw it a bet of $400. Mariano ends up letting it go and now closing out the action. What do I want to do? Holding a diamond, holding some key hands that uh, are pretty strong on a board like this. I'm going to experiment with a check raise, and it's going to be a fun part if he makes the call. I check raise at $1,300, and guess what? 
you can see on the graphics already what Mars has. I don't think he's going to be folding. He makes the call. We've got a fun one brewing. Turn King of Diamonds. Probably one of the most perfect turn cards to ever see in the deck. Holding the Ten of Diamonds in my hand. This could have some straights. Could have some flushes. Could maybe even have some full houses. Who even knows? But... Uh, here we are in this situation. I'm going to be blasting away as a bluff. I make it $3,000, and Mars is a pretty tricky and solid player. He's not going to go down without a fight. He makes the call. And we're off to a river, which is the Three of Hearts. It's a total brick. The diamonds at least have bricked out, and here we are. What am I going to do? Uh, I could certainly give up and check, or I could probably bet big and try to win the pot. So... With that said, I like the idea of trying to win opposed to giving up. As you watch my channel, I think you know this by now. And here we are. I'm going to throw an over bet this time to $12,000. I'm essentially repping like I have a jack. And if there's any way I can get an eight or a king to fold, that would be a really, really big win. But, but you can see on screen, Mars has a jack. And not only a jack, it's the best kicker that's not a full house. Ultimately, at the end of the day, Mars goes into the tank and finds a fold? That I don't get, but uh, I understand the issue, you know, with diamonds, with some full houses, with street possibilities. Uh, it's hard to continue with here with all of that going on. And nice to win this one. Moving on to the last hand of the night. It's a large one. Uh, large one as in Henry raises to $300 from early position. Wesley makes the call and I pick up aces. Yes, that is correct. I pick up aces here from the blinds and I make it $1,600 to go. What better way to end off the night here? Henry makes the call, West folds, and we're going heads up to a flop, which comes ace, four, four. That is what my friends, you call a boat. Essentially, the nuts behind pocket fours, but I can't expect him to have that. So here, first to act, I decided to throw out a very small block, bet of $400. Uh, pretty enticing, pretty weird, I think. And here, <laughs> uh, Henry thinks so as well, facing the 10% bet. He raises to $2,000. Oh, the action's getting started here. Sitting with top full house, never going to go away and make the call for $2,000, of course. And the turn is the king of clubs. Brings it back to our flesh draw. This... Might not be a good card for me because now, obviously, I can credibly rep that I have pocket kings and, you know, a lot of hands lose the pocket kings. I check it over to Henry and he throws out another bet this time, a big one of 7,400. Anyways, with the top full house, uh, I'm going to make the call and collect my winnings here. River is the seven of hearts. It is a backdoor flush completer, but once again, another brick. So I check and Henry throws out another bet this time of 18,000. There's not much else for me to do, right, everyone? I am not going to Hollywood a ton, you know, just kind of process the moment as I decide to shove all in for about $60,000 effective. What is Henry going to do? If you haven't watched the stream, comment down below what you guys think Henry's doing here with trip fours. Kind of insane how long he's thinking about it. And the more he thinks, the less safe and vulnerable I feel because obviously I want a call. And somehow, some way, Henry finds the sick fold with trips, gets out of there. Nice hand to you, Henry. He's literally just the best. And uh, here we are, wrapping things up on the day. A very successful stream, lots of swings, ups and downs, and lucky to be on the right side of it this time. All right, end of the night, safe to say, first time playing cash was a success wasn't the craziest game in the world but did but did end up playing some ridiculous pots nice to make the fold uh now that i know real time against wesley who had ace king of diamonds free rolling me on that flop and pretty sick unfortunate turn for me but nice to finally get away and then the last hand big props to henry for freaking folding a four how do you how do you have a four how do you fold a four so overall i think i'm pretty happy with how things went good prep and warm-up before the million dollar game and uh i'm excited for it i just uh i just got everything ready for the million dollar game there's there's a lot of money that's gonna be uh dealt in the very next video so a lot of hype i'm sure you guys already have seen what's going on what happened but uh i'm excited for it this is this is like the pre the warm up before. Anyways, this session I was in for $100,000 and I was out for 182,900. So what more can I say? It's very silly. I mean, I grind these turn for 10 hours at a time and I brick everything, come here for a couple hours and 
really sun run, I guess. But uh, crazy how things cash in go. I'll see you guys next time. Million dollar game. Get hyped. Next video is going to be fucking insane. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time. Hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. Of course, you got to do that. See you next time. Peace.